Hello, I'm Davia Chambers, bringing you stories on health, industry, life, and governance in Tobago. This is Let's Talk Tobago, and today we're on nine acres at the Palms Villa Resort. And before we show you the beauty and unspoiled lushness of Tobago from right here, let's check out the top three stories for this week. We've got highlights on the first of what will be regular meetings for the Chief Secretary and the Prime Minister. A look forward to Tobago's autonomy and it's a happy time at Adventure Phase 2. These and other stories when Let's Talk Tobago continues. The Tobago House of Assembly has a plan. The Comprehensive Economic Development Plan, CEDP. And it is for all of us. Are you ready to benefit from higher levels of development in Tobago and a higher standard of living? We ready! The priority areas are Branding Tobago, clean, green, safe, and serene. Business development and entrepreneurship. Are you ready? Human capital development. I'm ready. Social development and resilience. I'm ready. Improved infrastructure and utilities. Enhanced safety and security. I'm ready. Environmental sustainability. Tourism. Are you ready? Marine resources and forestry. Are you ready? Good governance and institutional reform. The CEDP is ready. Join us and get on board. Let's travel the island. island. Straight back to my land. My land. Even to Thailand. We're in Signal Hill at the Palms Villa Resort this week. Owned by David Byrne and his family, each villa reflects the 1920s colonial great house design. Now a new year of possibilities starts with working together. Here's Omodara Mills with the inside details on a meeting between the Chief Secretary and Prime Minister that gets the year off and running. Central government intends to uphold the Tobago House of Assembly Act of 1996, which states that the Prime Minister and the Chief Secretary shall hold regular discussions with a view to formulating administrative and legislative mechanisms for the promotion of harmony in the affairs of Trinidad and Tobago. It's against that background that we have met before and today's meeting had a particular focus. And the focus was to not just identify the problems, because I think by and large, we are very familiar with the problems, but we want it to be solution oriented. Internal self-governance for Tobago was one of the priority areas for the meeting. The Prime Minister and the Chief Secretary set the process in motion with guidelines and dates for both sides to move forward. We have agreed on a, on a process whereby what is going on in Tobago will be synchronized with what will go on in cabinet so that the public of Tobago and the public of, of Trinidad and Tobago will be involved in the process before it gets to the, 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 the parliament or after it gets to the parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. The process was further explained by the prime minister who hopes that by the middle of this year, cabinet can bring the public consultation document to parliament for debate. Tobago will continue its discussions and provide to the cabinet in the next few weeks the documents which are in the pipeline somewhere. When those documents come to the cabinet, the cabinet will discuss those documents and the cabinet will have a position on what Tobago has put forward. And then the cabinet will send those documents to the wider national community through representation in the parliament. To come to the parliament, and I think I've said before somewhere, that we'll send that to a joint select committee. The other issues discussed are improving the Caribbean Airlines service, construction of the airport terminal, water security for Tobago, regularization of land titles, public-private partnership for affordable housing, and revamping the study park quarry. Some of the plans are expected to be put into action by next month. I'm Omarara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Thank you for joining us. We're at the Palms Villa Resort. It's secluded and peaceful and may be perfect for your family holiday or reunion. We just heard in our last story that self-governance is of high priority. And in a word, Tobago is focused on reaching new heights in this aim. Here's Caroline Wallace. The struggle for Tobago's autonomy is not over. 
the Forum of Political Leaders has already resumed Tobago's pursuit for autonomy. The group reconvened early this year and made a number of decisions to move the campaign forward. Among them, one is that we should be looking at the documents which we would have uh, treated with during the course of this year. One document, of course, is the Tobago position on self-government for the island. The second document is a document where the forum would have made comments on the position taken by the previous government, uh, specifically referring to the 2013 bill. And the third document, which is a very important document, and that is, of course, the, the draft THE bill. The forum has since reviewed those documents, made amendments, and prepare them for presentation to Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley this week. We expect that when those documents are submitted, uh, it should trigger further discussions and, of course, a process which we hope and we expect will uh, not necessarily culminate but at least lead to uh, a document representing the views of the people of Tobago uh, being discussed uh, in a joint select committee at Parliament. Tobago's fight for self-government formally began in 1977. In 2016, the movement continues, but at this time with a united approach, which includes the people of Tobago. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Here is a good place to mix with local culture. The Signal Hill community is friendly and always lively. But speaking of mixing and mingling, we've got a health update. We're right in the middle of the flu season, which means you could be susceptible to the H1N1. We've outlined ways to help keep you well. Take a look. The H1N1 influenza virus is referred to as swine flu because genes in the H1N1 virus are similar to genes that are found in the influenza virus, which infects pigs or swine. It's a respiratory illness that can pass directly from infected pigs to humans. As of 2009, late 2015 and early 2016, the transmission has been from humans to humans, with symptoms that include cough, fever, cold, runny or stuffy nose, body aches, tiredness. Now, not everyone with the flu will have fever, and some persons may also get vomiting and or diarrhea. When persons are infected with H1N1, they can have mild symptoms or some persons can get symptoms so severe that they may need to be admitted to the hospital. People more likely to get the virus are children under 5 years old, people over 65 years, pregnant women, and people with chronic medical conditions. Although there have not been any reported cases in Tobago, the County Medical Officer of Health, the CMOH, and the Division of Health and Social Services has a plan of action to prevent any possible outbreaks. Some of those systems include increasing the testing for H1N1. We've been advertising for persons to please get their flu shot and we're pleased with the response to that. In addition to that, we had vaccine drives. We had one thus far in, during the Christmas to vaccinate our first responders. But there are some hygienic practices you can adopt to look after your own health. We refer to them as the three C's, clean, cover, and contain. So if everyone can clean their hands by washing their hands regularly with soap and water, cover your coughs and your sneezes with a tissue or with your arm, and then you throw the tissue away and wash your hands immediately, and contain the germs by persons who are ill trying to avoid contact with other persons as much as possible and getting medical attention immediately. The division and the CMOH and a public awareness campaign via the media, schools and all other public health facilities to reduce the chances of the virus entering or spreading on the island. Health officials are also prepared to deal with any possible outbreak that may occur in Tobago. I'm Omar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, five acres of fabulosity. We'll be right back after these messages. Going to Barbados? 
Why continue to pay high prices when you can get there for only U.S. $231.95, all taxes included? Yes, you heard right. You can now travel to Barbados from Tobago for a mere U.S. $231.95 on Gold's weekly service. So if you're going to Barbados for business, the beach, crossover, or attending university, stop wasting your money on those other high-priced airlines and get there for a fraction of the cost. To book, just log on to www.vogel.com.br. Barbados just got closer. People often want to know what's nearby. Well, you can easily get to many services from this resort. And close to here is Scarborough General Hospital and the Signal Hill Micro Mall. We're also close to our capital, Scarborough. But maybe you're looking for high above the Caribbean Sea. The Financial Times, Playboy, Observer Guardian, and now Forbes magazine all agree. One of the best places to stay while in Tobago is in Annasville. Have a look at this story. It's a location where you can just lay back and relax. Breathe fresh air. Hear birds chirp and waves breaking. It's a place where you can just be you. Hence the name Villa Being. You'll also be enjoying your stay at the most fabulous vacation villa in Tobago, according to Forbes magazine. It's really incredible that, um, that we have international recognition for the, for the type and quality of the product that we offer here. Global endorsement it all, is always great because, you know, it's one thing to do something no, la, national and local, but the other thing is we have to remember that we're catering to a global market. And the global um, recognition is extremely important for destinations like Tobago and globally as well, internationally. Um, that is what puts you on the map, and that's what puts Tobago on the map. And I think it's very important that, that the clients know that Tobago has quality to offer as well. To Dr. Oleana Poon, Villa Being stands out for a number of reasons, all of which incorporate nature. And as described by Forbes magazine, the Uber Chic property actually feels not like one villa, but many. A collection of marvelous mini homes that seem to blossom out of the hills of a lush tropical rainforest. Well, I think it's the whole ethos of um, of being. Um, even the name, it's it's very different. It's it's not about having. It's about being. It's about letting your hair down. It's about really you enjoying a quiet, peaceful, uh, secluded interaction with um, nature that's unsurpassed anywhere else. Dr. Poon wants other entrepreneurs to use this achievement as motivation to boost the quality of room stock in Tobago. This is small, but it's a great example of what could be done even on a larger scale here in Tobago. It's not about size, it's about quality. And we keep telling people, you know, when you look at um, quality is quality at all star levels. You know, it's like paying for three-star and getting four-star value. Villa Being is helping the Division of Tourism and Transportation to achieve one of its goals, to ensure Destination Tobago can market high-quality lodging. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The friendly staff here at Palms Villa Resort ensures that your stay is comfortable, relaxing and memorable. Now water helps plants grow, but it's pretty well known that one active farming community has been in a bit of a drought. Soon, that will no longer be the case. In this solutions-oriented year, Goldsboro, you're getting fixed. Take a look. This river flows through a part of the Goldsboro estate. The water course is a potential resource to supply water to the estate, particularly during the dry season. The idea is to dam the water and provide a means to more than 30 farmers who operate on the 3,000-acre estate. The division wants to make sure that there should never be a problem for water and irrigation in this plot. Previously, this area was a washing plant. Um, it's now defunct, but the area was prime for chopping water, damming, and then provide filtering of true pumps um, to provide a, a washing service. We've identified this and we want to adapt it for the purposes of agriculture. The Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment is also working with other divisions in the THA to construct a farmer's market in the area. This will ensure that the farmers can sell their crops legally and securely. More or less it will be open space, um, a high roof. Uh, we're probably putting some level of glazing so that the populace could see inside, make sure that it's cool. Um, not too intricate of a building, 
Um, it does give them the, 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 the adequate space to, to, to sell to the public comfortably. Farmers on the estate have a passion for supplying Tobagonians with wholesome produce at reasonable prices. They are welcoming the initiatives which give them a chance to do exactly that. These two initiatives are so great and I believe that uh, water is the, the, the prime uh, resource for agriculture development. And once uh, we get um, adequate water, I believe that we can do great things. And also, with a market in place, right, we will strive to want to do our best so that we can uh, fill that market. It's a great initiative and um, I feel very good about it. I feel confident and positive that it's going to happen. You know, working along with Mr. Shalban and Mr. Adams, you know, they give us the assurance and we really see that things have been put in place. So in a short space of time, we believe we're going to be seeing some actions. The projects are expected to start by March and should be completed by the end of this year. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Sometimes all it takes is a hot cup of coffee, a cool breeze, a flower garden and this porch of course to create that peace of mind you may have left behind. Now in an effort to improve responses to medical emergencies, Plymouth gets a base station. This next story has more on this good idea. The Tobago Emergency Medical Services, Thames, got another building at Commissioner Street in Plymouth. The building is completed, equipped and ready for use. But why Plymouth? While it's all part of the plan to ensure better emergency medical services throughout the island. To bring prenatal care, sorry, pre-hospital care to the people of Tobago. The current base includes Charlottesville, Delaford, Palatovia, and today we have extended the ambulance service to the community of Plymouth. The Tobago Regional Health Authority is also working to lower response times to medical emergencies and improve the service across Tobago. Tobago is unique in its geographic positioning and its topography. Response time is dependent on not distance, but topography. And in so doing, the TRHA looked at a few variables, population density, call volume, etc. And hence, we are where we are today, response time. Response time determines outcome in pre-hospital care. So it is the intention of the TRHA to be able to decrease response time. Now that the building has been constructed and ambulances and workers are on spot, the services of the ambulances would be readily available to serve Plymouth and environs whenever they are needed. As the TRHA recognizes that early intervention is, is essential in the process of saving lives, I encourage the community to take care of the base. It is not a venture that was done lightly and is here to serve the people of Plymouth and environs. And as the staff of the Tobago Regional Health Authority continues to put the health of Tobagonians first, they encourage us to remember that a healthy home is a healthy family. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's a new year and for some that means a new home. More on this when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. Hey, why don't you step into the Scarborough Library facility? It has all the knowledge of our land, people and heritage that you just won't find online. The Scarborough Library facility is now open. Tobago Library Services. Information inspires innovation. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Davia Chambers and we're at the Palms Villa Resort. It comprises five villas, each of which has a veranda, pool and a visitor's gallery. Welcome home was the feeling for a group of happy people in this next story. They moved into their brand new townhouse at Adventure. Have a look. These people are having a feel-good moment. 
That's because they have been able to meet the financial requirements and are now being presented with their new homes, townhouses located at the Adventure Phase 2 housing development. I'm very excited and elated. I think it's one of my best Christmas ever. One of the 13 recipients in this batch says that she appreciates the DHA's move to subsidize the homes by approximately 50%. I think this Adventure Phase 2 is a really nice initiative for the people of Tobago. It has made homes available to Tobagonians who could not have afforded homes at luxurious prices. The townhouse construction is facilitated by the Division of Settlements and Labour. It is one of the avenues the division uses to meet the needs of many of the island's housing applicants. This division has given you the opportunity to share celebrate with your friends and family. So this function today is no doubt an exciting moment for you. You can now say to your friends and family, welcome to my home. Another key distribution ceremony will take place in the early part of this year. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. You may have your dream wedding here at the resort and included in the honeymoon package is champagne or a stocked refrigerator or maybe even flowers. Destination Tobago in effect. Cruise lines and airlines can bring you in and whether we're a port of call or a turnaround, it does not matter. We say just come and experience this side of paradise. Juliet James with the story. Approximately 200 cruise ship passengers will experience a partial turnaround in Tobago, thanks to a new arrangement between Costa Cruises and the Condo Airline. It's a move that should bring more travelers to the island. We had passengers flying in on board Condo into the A&R Robins International and transferred from that point to join the ship at Scarborough. Now the fact that all the passengers did not fly in to join the ship, but only some came in to join the ship, is seen as a partial turnaround. Although this type of partnership between cruise ships and airlines is common, Mr. Henry says it brings the destination more exposure, especially among cruise executives. It lifts the profile of the island. It tells other cruise lines that Tobago is not just a port of call, but is a port that can be used to turn around passengers. As a matter of fact, coming out of this, um, Carnival UK, Carnival UK is thinking of and looking at Tobago as a turnaround port for their vessels as well. The arrangement will also provide greater opportunity for increased revenues among maxi and taxi operators. The fact that they, um, they came last year and they saw it fit to come this year with a bigger ship sends us a certain message. And that message is that they are showing some confidence in the destination and they like what they saw. Costa Magica is part of the Costa Cruises fleet. The ship is on a seven day cruise in the Caribbean and Tobago is the first port of call. At the port of Scarborough, I'm Julia James for Let's Talk Tobago. Palms Villa Resort also has a pond. Some of nature's best can be found right here. And if you live in Tobago and in the market for a job, this story may help. A good step to getting employment is to enroll in a training program. Have a look. It was a celebration and recognition of hard work and accomplishments when 500 certificates were distributed to Tobagonians for completing the vocational skills program. The training was an initiative of the Division of Community Development and Culture. During the cycle which took place from February to November, participants received training in areas such as digital photography, glass engraving and drapery to name a few. The Vocational Skills Training Program is an initiative geared towards equipping persons with various creative, social and economic skills. This graduate is one example of the success of the program. With the skills acquired at the program, she now makes her own clothes. And imagine I paid $10 per yard for the cloth. I bought six yards. And 
It was just a simple outfit, and my seamstress charged me $375 to sew it. I said, but it's $10 I had to pay for the cloth. But you know, is this is African. I didn't argue she. I paid her money, and I said, well, my dear, this is the last money you will be getting from me. Another graduate who completed the course in food preservation boasted that with this skill, she can now garner another income. You can't go to money. Once you start with fruits, fruits come in all the time, all different kind of fruits, and you can do something with it. Not only for yourself, not to sell all. You have special friends and family you can give something to, and you have something to give in your pocket. So if you didn't get pay, you still could sell something and you get that money. Regardless of which of the more than 40 courses they enrolled in, all the graduates were indeed thankful for the opportunity to be a part of the program. Now, sometimes we might say that, you know, oh God, Engi, we know equipment and Engi with this and Engi with that. But ladies and gentlemen, think about it. If we had to pay for these courses, half of us would not have been here today. Right? Um, out of these classes, I know some of us would have started our own small business. I myself has recently started a small business with soap and candles, thanks to Mrs. Adams and community development. This program is a recurring one, and a new cycle is set to commence early next year. From the Division of Community Development and Culture, I'm Kimberly Job for Let's Talk Tobago. We've seen new homes and new plants in this half hour, but the reality is that this time of year can be tough for many families. So we want to know what sacrifices you're making in your household to offset the current economic challenges. It's Have Your Say time where you get to have your say, and here's what a few of our viewers had to say. As adults, as parents, and as um, citizens, we need to check where we can cut corners, where we can do things a little bit, um, uh, let's, just, let's say, cheaper. We are no longer using our ovens. We are living above our means. We are living a materialistic world. And if we could address all those issues and go back to basics, we will be all right. People can cut back on the spending. People can try to plant a backyard garden to help eliminate. And you just buy the things that you really have need for, not those, the things that you want. What shall we spend every cent and try to save? We have too much a wastage, people overspending money, things what is not necessary they buy in, and all these kind of stuff. Prevent yourself from doing things that are unnecessary, right? So that you'll be able to be comfortable within this the situation that before you. That's all for us this week. As always, send us your comment or query about anything you've seen in this program. And be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers. On behalf of all of us from the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, we wish you a safe and productive week. See you next time.